good morning everyone so let's start with our next unit so the next unit is memory organization right so in this unit we will study the main memory right and what is the connection of that main memory and how the main memory is connected to cpu that we'll see okay. so <clears throat> memory again what is memory so memory is anything in which you can store right your main memory there is one kind of storage then your hard disk that is a one kind of storage so we have different different kind of storage so these are the memory and sometimes we don't require all the stuff at a given time right so based on that we have a different different uh, capacity of storage right so hard disk you have a large storage your main memory that is a uh, small storage so based on their utilization purpose you have different types of memory so which are the different memories you have you have main memory you have auxiliary memory so main memory that i have told you which had direct connection to your cpu your auxiliary memory which stores your data permanently means your hard disk magnetic disk magnetic tab those are the auxiliary memory and these are the some of the parameters on which the memories are differentiated the volatility means once you stop giving the power will it store the data or not based on the capacity means storage right it's a small storage large storage likewise register that is also a memory right but in that you can store uh, some limited amount of memory and hard disk it is also one kind of storage where you can store large amount of data and speed of memory right so speed so registers your main memory your cache memory has a higher speed compared to your hard disk so that is the speed mm, so main memory memory unit that communicate directly with cpu and it consists of your ram and rom right some portion of memory main memory that is a ram and some portion is rom we will see what is ram and rom later on and your auxiliary memory means it provides your backup means all your data will store in your auxiliary memory means your magnetic tab hard disk in that right so that is non volatile right if you don't give power then also After later on, you will get that data, but in main memory, right? So once the power is off, the all data which is in RAM that will be destroyed. Right in RAM, the data in ROM that will not be destroyed. It will remain as it is. Okay. <coughs> Now let's see memory organization and relation between it. So we know there is a CPU central processing unit which perform the task, right? So CPU, your CPU will perform the task, and it requires data, right? Whatever you have, like program, so that program will be a data one kind of. It requires data, okay? I/O processor means your input output from auxiliary memory that will be handled by this io processor okay and we have different memory right we have a cache memory we have main memory we have magnetic tabs we have magnetic disk right so <clears throat> the cpu has direct access to main memory CPU has direct access to main memory and it can directly 
take the data from main memory okay then there is a cache memory okay so why cache memory so cache memory will store the data which are frequently accessed right which are frequently accessed and it will provide the data at the speed of the cpu right to get the data from hard disk it will take a large time right so we'll store some parts of the data in main memory you can access this main memory but now the processing power of cpu is much higher than your main memory so some portion of main memory that is stored in cache memory so whenever cpu requires any data first it will search into cache memory if the data is available into cache memory data is available into cache memory it will take it from cache memory and it is faster it is faster so it will take that data now if the data is not available in cache memory then it will take that data from main memory but as the data is frequently accessed then it will put that data into cache memory okay so cache memory is seven times faster than main memory okay and this main memory is i think 1000 times as per the book one time 1000 times faster than this auxiliary memory <clears throat> now how you'll get data into main memory through io processor from auxiliary memory so magnetic disk magnetic tabs these are your auxiliary memory. means your hard disk and usb drive so from this through io processor the data will be in main memory and through main memory the data will be passed to cpu if it is not available in cache if it is frequently accessed then that data will be placed into cache memory okay so this is organization and relation between different memory okay so just keep this thing into mind right that processor will not directly access data from magnetic disk or magnetic tabs through IO processor that data will be placed into main memory and CPU will access that main memory only okay so CPU has direct access to main memory and your cache memory. okay so if data is not available in cache memory then it will take it from main memory if data is not available in main memory the data will be brought to main memory from auxiliary memory these are the auxiliary memory okay and this data right so you see the hierarchy see s2 main memory to auxiliary memory okay now let's see the memory hierarchy so it is placed in this pyramid right it indicates something so this is a remote secondary storage means you are accessing like a google drive you uh, place your data in your google drive at some web server right or distributed file system. these are the remote secondary storage the second is your like local secondary storage means if you are using your pc then the hard disk that is called a local secondary storage and your main memory right ram and rom and then your cache memory and above that we have a registers right so what this pyramid indicates as it goes up as it goes up right the size is smaller means storage capacity is smaller right it's a remote secondary storage they have a large amount of storage right so if you are aware about cloud and all infrastructure then it will give you a large storage then you have local storage means 1 tb 2 tb like that then you have main memory 16 gb 32 gb 
then you have cache memory in MB and then you have registers in bits right so see this the data means capacity is decreasing when you go up the speed will be faster what speed to access the data from this memory will increase means to get the data from your hard disk right it will take much time then to take data from registers we will take the data cpu right so to access the data from register it is a uh, faster for cpu than the local secondary storage right same way uh, when you go down right the size will be larger the access speed will be uh, slower and the clear and it will be cheaper this is the per byte storage cost so if i want to like 1 tb hard disk and all right if you are going to purchase it will cost around you 4k right and the main memory like 8 gb or 16 gb uh, ram if you want to purchase then it will cost something like that only okay around so see the per byte cost you go up it will increase it will is right cost right when you go down it is so this is the memory hierarchy and different memories available uh, this DRAM stand for dynamic RAM and cache stand for your static RAM. Now there is a concept of multiprogramming. Now assume that uh, your system allow only uh, allow to run only one program at a time. So what happened? So we are running one program and all the time the concentration on that program only now suppose that program requires some io operation right so in that case if programs require some io means input output it right? suppose uh, you have written a program for to print hello right and uh, then after printing hello you ask enter some value uh, to user and then user will and after user enters that value the program will print that value okay so first hello will be printed then will scan the value your program will scan the value and then that value will be printed now initially till you print hello the cpu is busy is doing your stuff after that after that you require to enter the value by user it is waiting for that io means it is waiting for the input from the user at that time cpu is idle cpu is not doing anything right and we are running only one program right your system operating system is not in this multi-programming stuff right so we'll wait for that io once we enter the value after that it will print that value and at that time cpu doing some thing and once we complete this then it will take the next program right in this case the cpu is not utilized properly right so that's why we require multi-programming environment where multiple process or you can say program are running independently okay so this is the concept of operating system which enable the cpu to process a number of independent programs concurrently right so as i given the example so that was the one program and suppose there is another program uh, one program p1 and another program p2 and that is also doing the same task so while p1 is waiting for the input cpu can start processing this p2 right so same way you can have 
multiple programming so right now the ms team is running and some like background stuff is also if you are running so that is due to multi programming environment <clears throat> so why it is require keeps cpu busy by working with several programs in the sequence if you have multiple processor then you can work concurrently but if you have a single cpu then the work is concurrent right in iowa view at that time p2 is uh, the pro cpu is doing the work p2 but cpu is doing one work at a time what we have reduced we have reduced the idle time okay we are keeping cpu busy so we'll feel that this program is executing concurrently but they are not executing concurrently by cpu cpu is taking one by one sequentially right but due to this multi programming due to this multi programming right now cpu will keep uh, cpu will be busy cpu will be busy so now let's move to main memory <coughs> your main memory it's relatively large and fast memory but do your register and cache memory larger than your register and cache faster than your auxiliary memory used to store programs and data during the computer operation means if you want to run anything that data must be in your main memory right if you open chrome so that some portion of that program will be in your main memory if you open ms team some program of ms team will be in your main memory okay some portion i am telling because assume that your ms team require uh, okay don't take ms team like take some game right uh, nfs or cs counter strike or something which require more ram and suppose you have 4 gb ram uh, computer so as i told you that whenever you want to run something that program must be in your main memory right so in this case i want to run this game so 4 gb accord data the in you want in your ram right but we don't require a whole data at a time right if at level 1 we don't require data for level 2 3 like that so whenever we require data we will take that data from hard disk we'll take from hard disk right so data from hard disk to your main memory it will be placed and this mapping will be stored in page table and this is the task of memory management unit mmu this will study uh, this you will study in operating system so this will be a task of memory management unit it will do this stuff but just now remember this anything that you want to run the portion of that program must be in your main memory your ram okay random access memory okay so you can access any word from memory i am telling you word why because the word size can be anything it can be a byte one byte it can be a two byte word size so any word that you you can access suppose you have a mm, 512 bytes of ram 512 bytes of ram and each word size is two bytes each word size is two bytes so in this case how many words are there so there are 120 uh, 256 words are there and we require to address this 256 words 
and you can access any of this randomly if I want to directly access 128 I can access it if I want to access 256 I can access it so random access memory it can be a static and dynamic we are not going in deep for static and dynamic then your read only memory your room right but as we uh, told you that it's uh, part of your main memory only like the main memory consists of ram and rom okay so what is this rom uh, sorry what is this rom it's a read only memory so once you write the data in this rom <coughs> the data can be cannot be updated okay it will remain as it is and this is a non volatile memory means power is off then also the data will remain in rom but in ram once power goes off right data will not be stored in your ram random access memory now one thing random access memory so rom is also random access memory it's also random access so instead of just writing this random access memory you can write, li uh, write like this it's a read write memory because in RAM you can perform read and write means you can read from RAM and you can write to RAM but in ROM you can just read right so this is the precise name rather than this okay. this is also random access so these are the parts of RAM. Now when ROM is required, right? So some of the programs permanently you want, right? So as I said, it's a, uh, sorry, for RAM, it's a volatile, can perform read and write operation. There are two types of RAM, static RAM and your dynamic RAM. So static RAM is consists of internal flip flops that store the binary information. Okay, so it don't require the uh, refreshing kind of thing. And the static RAM. So cache is mem uh, made up of this static RAM. Your dynamic RAM. So your main memory that we are talking, right? That is made up of RAM. It stores the binary information in the form of electric charge right and that is applied to capacitors so as capacitor is involved in this that required and it reduces the power consumption and gives you larger storage than SRAM okay your main memory main memory that is made up of DRAM but your cache that is made up of SRAM okay and both are volatile means once you stop giving power right both will um, whatever data you store right they don't keep data okay you lost the data boom read only memory it's a non-volatile can perform read operation only stores program and data that are permanently reside in the computer and that do not change in value like your bootstrap router so when you start your pc so you uh, push that power button when you push that power button what happened actually internally so when you push that power button right at that time the program that is in bootstrap loader this is one kind of program it will be loaded in your main memory right other stops right once os is loaded other stops that will be handled by your operating your operating system is also one kind of program, right? System. So, to load that or to run that uh, operating system, you need to. How you can do it? So, this bootstrap loader, right? It will do that. The program whose function is to start computer software operating when power is turned on. Okay, when power is turned on, the hardware of the computer says the program counter to first address of the boots. 
folder program counter the use of program counter is store the next instruction to be executed kayu karvanu che a okay and what it does when you boot your system it will uh, make the program counter and give the address of bootstrap loader to program counter so now it knows where to start and the bootstrap program loads a portion of your operating system from your disk to main memory and control is then transferred to os and which is your computer for general use okay so keep one partition i think c generally c partition is your for operating system right so first we need to run the operating system it uh, thing can be taken care by this bootstrap program okay and after that whatever you do that will be handled by your operating system <clears throat> now let's see the some of the block diagrams is the ram chip so this is your ram and this is 128 by 8 indicates there are 128 words and this is one word size right words and this is one word size okay how many words are there 128 what is the word size 8 bits means one byte one byte and how many such word 128 so what is the capacity of this ram it's a 128 bytes 128 bytes you can address each 128 words by giving address so there are 128 how many address 128 addresses are there from each address what i will get from each address i will get one word and what is the word size that is one byte it is one byte so when you will pass the address when you pass the address what it will read it will read one byte means 8 bit data right so there is 8 bit data bus means so this is bi directional why because you can store data into ram and you can read data from ram you can write it you can read it and 8 bits why because this is our word size one byte okay now as i said there are 128 words total 128 words now if i want to give address to each the word how many bits are required how many bits are required now let me reduce this word and make it four for understanding so suppose there are four words word number 1 word number 2 word number 3 and word number 4 each having eight one bit one byte one byte one byte and one byte so how many bits are required to give unique address to each word so for this i can write 00 01 10 11 and 11 so how many bits are required two bits right so for differentiating four words and to give unique address to four words i require Two bits, right? So, general equation. If I want to make, then write this four in two to the power. So, four is two is two, right? So, this number is number of bits that you require. Okay, so one twenty eight. If I write in two to the power, then it is two is two, seven. to the seven so how many bits are required seven bits using those seven bits using those seven bits i can address each word right 
so the address will start from 0 to 127 the first address will be all 7 bits 0 and the last address will be all 7 bits are 1 right so that's why you require 7 bit address address right so that 7 bit you will pass here you will pass that 7 bit right once you that pass that 7 bit right once you pass that 7 bit it will locate the address means which word will locate it which word right then either you can read it or you can write to it you can read from that address or you can write to that address for that you require this read and write if the read is enabled then you can read from data from this address and that data will be passed here means one byte will be passed here if it is a write then once the address is located the data which is here that will be written to this address right it will be written to this address okay <coughs> and there are two chip select there are two chips select one is CS1 and another is CS2 bar right so when this CS1 is 1 means this is 1 and this input is 0 means if you pass 0 it will complement it and make it 1 so at that time this chip will be enabled at that time this chip will be enabled otherwise otherwise it will be in inhibit state means it will not do anything and at that time your mm, data will in inhibit state means it works like an open circuit there is no use or no signal at this point okay when it is 1 and this chip select is 0 input is 0 right when it is 1 and it is in 0 at that time this chip will be enabled and then you can perform other operation okay so here the bit can be 0 1 or inhibit means no use of that signal okay so this is a block diagram of m and this is 128 cross 8 rem suppose instead of this 128 cross 8 if i give you 512 cross 16 512 cross 16 so your data bus is 16 bits means 2 byte and 512 such words means each word having 2 bytes so 512 2 raised to 9 so how many address line is required 9 right and what is the size of the data bus 16 okay <coughs> now let's see the function table and this chip is working so you know this like 000111 means one except one zero if the input is anything 000111 right doesn't matter what is the read and write right memory function is inhibit and your state of the data bus will be high impedance means no use of this no use of this it works like a open circuit okay but if it is one and zero and your chip is enabled chip is enable and you are not giving any read and write means both are zero zero means no read no write so in that case also it will work memory is function is inhibit means it works like open circuit and no relevance of your data bus okay means high impedance state <clears throat> now if one zero and you are giving a write read is 0 
and right is one means will perform the right operation means the address that is passed here it will locate that address and take the data from this data buff and as write is enabled it will write the data to your ram okay so it will perform the write operation input data to ram right the last one is again chip is enabled now read is one when read is one we not we don't check write when read is one we don't check write the read will be performed okay in that case right if write is one then also that won't be considered right read will be considered for write operation read must be zero and write must be one now one and write is uh, we don't care about write now so memory function is read and in that case output data from ram so whatever address you will pass it will locate that and that word will be transferred to your data bus okay this is a ram chip hmm. next is your rom chip so rom chip this is 512 cross 8 so this thing you know this is address right now rom is read only memory you can just read from it so it's a unidirectional you can just read data from rom so 8 bit data bus and 9 bit address line 2 raised to 9 so 9 bit address line so for same size of ram and rom rom will give you more address rom will you give you more address and two chip select cs1 and cs2 bar right one chip select that is used to enable that chip and as i said that your main memory right it consist of ram and rom both so sometimes you need to select from ram and sometimes you need to from rom so for that selection either ram or rom right you require this chip select too and to enable this chip any chip we require this chip select one two you select between ram and rom just remember this thing okay so now <clears throat> this memory connection to the cpu that we will discuss in next lecture